There's a glass tube inside this box that has gas inside it, and it's neon gas, and there's electrodes at the end of the tube that apply a high voltage to it. And so there's a small current which is being passed through there, electrically excites the neon atoms and causes them to give off light. And neon gas has a very, very particular spectrum. It produces this wonderful red color, which is why it's used in signs. It gives you a lovely, lovely color. Different gases have different spectra and different colors. This is neon, very, very pretty. We're going to look at another gas, and the gas we're going to look at today, not as pretty, but much more important in terms of the development of quantum mechanics, and also much easier for us to make calculations on. This tube is hydrogen gas. And the hydrogen gas has more of a kind of a purple cast, a little red, a little bit of blue. And we're going to look at the quantum states of the hydrogen atom and how they explain the appearance of the light that we see. Now, if you look closely at the light from this tube, it's got a bunch of different what we call spectral lines. And why we call this a line spectrum is something we can see. We're going to dim the lights so they're able to see this. And then I'm going to bring a diffraction grating in front of the tube. And when I do that, it'll take the light that comes out of the tube, break it up into different colors, and allow us to see the spectrum of a light that's emitted from the hydrogen gas. Bring the diffraction grating in front of the light. You can see the spectrum of the tube on either side. And if I take this diffraction grating and I put it closer to the camera, we'll be able to see the spectrum. And you can see the lines that you get in the spectrum. And this hydrogen tube has some impurities in it, and so it's a bit more complicated. But you can see there's a blue line, there's a blue-green line, and then there's a nice, strong red line. And that's what gives the tube its kind of reddish cast. And it's that red line in particular that we're going to be interested in today. Let's take a look at the problem. Here's our problem. What are the energies, electron volts, of the lowest six energy levels of the hydrogen atom? The red line in the hydrogen spectrum has a wavelength of 656 nanometers. What are the principal quantum numbers for the initial and final electron states of the transition? Well, we have two parts to this problem. First off, we're going to calculate the energies in electron volts of the lowest six energy levels for a hydrogen atom. So we'll do that. After we've done that, we're going to try to find the principal quantum numbers for the initial and final electron states for a transition that corresponds to the emission of a photon of 656 nanometers. In this problem, we're going to be working with energy level states and electron volts. So we're going to convert the photon energy to electron volts. Now our basic equation for photon energies is this. The energy of the photon is equal to H times C divided by lambda. The usual value of Planck's constant that we have is in joules times seconds. But we have a value for it that's in electron volt seconds. And if we use this value, and that's 4.13 times 10 to negative 15th electron volt seconds, if we use that value, we'll end up calculating photon energy in not joules, but electron volts. So let's do that. 656 nanometers, so the energy of the photon is equal to Planck's constant, and we're going to use the value in electron volt seconds, 4.13 times 10 to the minus 15th electron volts seconds, times the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, divided by the wavelength, and we need to put that in meters, of course, and the wavelength of the red line in the spectrum that we need to consider is 656 times 10 to the minus 9th meters. We can check our units in this equation, and they cancel. We have meters that cancel. We have seconds cancels with 1 over seconds. And we're left with just electron volts. And so if we do that, we calculate a photon energy of 1.89 electron volts. Now we're going to go back and do what was stated as the first part of the problem. And that is to calculate the energies of the first six energy levels for the hydrogen atom. Well, remember, the energy for the nth level in the hydrogen atom, and we identify those with the subscript n, and that corresponds to the principal quantum number. The nth state has an energy of negative 13.6 electron volts divided by the square of n, where it has that principal quantum number. So we need to calculate values for n equals 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, and 5, and 6. 
We can do that using this very formula. And if we calculate values, here's what we get. For n equals 1, negative 13.6. For n equals 2, we get negative 3.4. For n equals 3, negative 1.51. For n is level 4, negative 0 0.85. For n is level 5, negative 0 0.54. And for n is level 6, negative 0 0.38. Now these are all negative because they're all below zero. This table is nice, but it's better if we can represent this visually, set of energy level states for the hydrogen atom. And if we do it, here's what we get. Okay, our lowest energy level corresponds to n equals one. And that's at an energy of negative 13.6 electron volts. That corresponds to n equals one. Higher values of n correspond to higher energies. So n equals two has an energy of negative 3.4. N equals three corresponds to an energy level of negative 1.51. Still negative, but less negative, and so it's higher. And N equals four, we can go ahead and put that one in. That corresponds to an energy of negative 0.85. And that's enough for right now. We know if an electron drops from one energy state to another state, it gives off a photon, and the energy of the photon is equal to the difference in energy between the two states. So we're looking not at the energy levels themselves, but the difference in the energy levels. Well, we need to come up with a difference in energy levels that corresponds to an, a photon energy of 1.89 electron volts. That's what corresponds to that red line in hydrogen that we're looking at in this problem. So what energy states will we look at to produce that energy difference? We'll give you some choices. We know that we can't possibly be looking at an energy level transition that goes down into this lowest possible energy state. That can't possibly be true because that sits at negative 13.6 electron volts. So any transition is gonna have energies much, much more than the photon energy we're looking at. In fact, we're looking at a transition between n equals three with an energy of negative 1.51 electron volts to n equals two with an energy of negative 3.4 electron volts. When an electron drops from n equals three to n equals two, the difference in energy, and that's E3 minus E2, that difference in energy is negative 1.51 electron volts minus 3.4 electron volts, which is simply 1.89 electron volts. And that difference is exactly equal to the photon energy. So we are looking at, in this case, a transition from n equals three down to n equals two. That transition produces a photon of energy 1.89 electron volts, which is in fact in the red part of the spectrum. Let's assess our calculation. We calculated an energy of photons emitted by hydrogen. And by the way, that energy corresponds to a wavelength and the way you measure the wavelength is by using a diffraction grating and actually calculating it. If we measure the wavelength, calculate a value for it, we get exactly the number that you were given in the problem. We get 656 nanometers. So the red line has a value of 656 nanometers. We calculate an energy corresponding to those photons. Separately, we calculated the energy level states for the hydrogen atom. And we found the number that we got for the photon energy corresponded to an exact difference between two energy states of the hydrogen atom. And that exact correspondence between the photon energy and the difference in energy states gives us confidence that the calculation that we made was correct because we came up with one value for energy two different ways. And the number that we have for the photon energy is a number that's based on a real physical measurement. And so ultimately, everything's tied back to a real physical measurement about the world, which is as it should be. Physics is about the world around us.